At the end of the day, businesses are looking for an abstracted way to handle this cloud and infrastructure interaction. So, so it, And they want to do that with as little drama as possible. They need a reliable way to say, I need to build this cluster or configure this system. That, that's what these products do. Hi, this is your host, Bill Bhartia, and welcome to TFR. Let's talk. And today we have with us once again, Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of Rack. And Rob, it's great to have you on the show again. Flop, it's a pleasure. Uh, this uh, Terraform change and the, the Tofu uh, project now, um, I think, is the source of endless possibilities for discussion and, and significant and important ones, too. I remember our discussion when Hashi Corp made that announcement, and then I was at Open Source Summit. So I talked to Sebastian when Open Tofu was announced there. Um, I, uh, have you seen that uh, interview with St- Sebastian? I did. It was an excellent, excellent job. Every, you you answered a lot of great questions, and you I think you raised some questions also. Right. And uh, once you saw the interview, you had a lot of questions, and we want to kind of tackle some of those. Uh, but before uh, I jump into uh, the main topic, uh, what role do you see Open Tofu is going to play in the whole, you know, Terraform uh, infrastructure code space? Where do you feel that it is filling some of the gap niches that was created because of the business source license? I think that from a business user perspective, I think Open Tofu really opens up the market and the portability of that of of infrastructure as code at that layer and the cloud the cloud and API interface uh, lightweight orchestration. Like I, I really think that the that as a business user, as a as a general market, that we are well served by having, you know, a guaranteed open governance for something that has been so widely embedded. And I, I think that that portability really benefits. It means that companies who are using uh, Open Tofu as a base and and are used to using Terraform from uh, had had been using Terraform. Um, if they switched open tofu have a uh, confidence in vendor portability vendor neutrality when they embed that platform into their into their systems um, so I, I think if you look at the current status quo of the industry and you look at how people are using terraform today um, I think that that provides um, actually a lot of commercial benefit uh, and assurance to companies who are who are involved in the market Use, using those products. What does it mean for Racken? Oh boy, for Racken, I we I don't know. We, um, you know, we have uh, abstractions that take and run Terraform for on customers' behalf. We have abstractions that allow people to use Terraform interface to our product, Digital Rebar. Um, and so, you know, without a doubt, the changes that uh, HashiCorp made to the license would prohibit our ability to use. Uh, Terraform without, you know, a, a dispensation from them or something else. So Open Terra Tofu allows us to continue to use cloud interfacing in that model. However, our designs didn't assume that Terraform was the only way people would do that interfacing. So we already anticipated that customers wanted neutrality from an API perspective. And so, you know, the expectation here, I think, is this is what customers, what I've heard when I've talked to our customer base they are expecting to um, use both. So they'll use Terraform where they're continuing to use Terraform. It doesn't, the business license change doesn't actually impact people doing that. If they were using alternatives to Terraform cloud, then this allows those alternatives to continue to operate. And so they're, you know, they're they're happy about that. It it removes that that complication. But it it doesn't actually change their their choice that much. If they're using one of the alternatives, then they'll be using one of the alternatives. If they're using Ter- Terraform and, and HashiCorp based products, they'll continue to use those products. Um, there, there wasn't that much need, if you will, for customers to to reuse as much of the binaries, at least. And that's one of the one of the, the one of the items from that interview was a lot of talk about binary compatibility and. Me listening to that, thinking about how our customers consume that technology, you're going to you use a, a, a stack, and 
the need for binary compatibility isn't necessarily important as long as you could, um, you know, take the Terraform plans or the state files. Even the state files, I think you could translate state files so they don't even have to be compatible. So the need for compatibility here is, I think, um, much lower in practice than, you know, what what the market is is right now worried about. And I think if we can say, you know what, we don't actually have to worry as much about compatibility as we are, then the open tofu community can follow an innovation path based on what their needs are. Right. Uh, I mean, as in the discussion, uh, he clearly mentioned that they will try, not try to drop in lip placement just the way MySQL or MariaDB became over time. But uh, since, you know, legally they cannot look at the code and the project will evolve over time, you know, uh, and it was the, at one time maybe Hashikar will come back to its sense and actually even join Open Tofu as their own upstream. But uh, uh, I, I, since you mentioned binary compatibility, I, I do want to quickly talk about just going deeper. They're really, you know, if, as you said, businesses really won't care who are in Terraform or they're. But as we use RHEL versus CentOS, you know, it's both used in the same. Organizations use SUSE Linux also. We do multi-cloud. It's multi. It, that's why it was a hybrid platform that we used to talk about. Now we talk about hybrid cloud. So, so can you talk about it from your perspective because you do deal with clients, you know, directly. We do. Um, I, the, and this is the thing, you know, HashiCorp. It, my expectation for them is that they are going to continue to innovate and add into. The platforms that they have. They actually need to build a suite of products. You know, I've talked about this in the past. And they're going to add into Terraform and their other products in ways that, you know, aren't going to be compatible and actually might not be well served for the other ups, the other, you know, users of Open Tofu. And and the trying to keep them the same like we do at Linux distributions. I think is actually going to be a challenge, right? We for Linux, we say the core is is the same, but the distributions actually have different packaging, and where you download packages from varies depending on the distribution you have. And maintaining those package repos is actually the work of the distribution. And so, you know, the the important thing to users here is that they have a maintained, innovative piece of software. That's that's the value that they that. Uh, you know, a customer wants to do. Nobody's compiling <laughs> Open Tofu or Terraform. They're getting it from a distro. That distro is going to have you know add-on pieces that create license er, and commercial value that they expect people to pay for. Um, and that that's how people want to consume it. The, the challenge with Terraform and, and people forget this is that Terraform itself you know, was free, people were charging for the management layers for it. And that was the design. That's actually pretty typical for open open core type software here. And for the companies that are going to build on top of open tofu, they're going to have to differentiate their management platform. They they right because open tofu is is not differentiated. It it can't be. They're going to have to differentiate the management platform. The question becomes do they add things into open tofu just like HashiCorp is now doing with Terraform, where they're adding things into Terraform that differentiate their management platform. You know, how will the community do that with Open Tofu? Because that's ultimately what the end users care about. Do I have a management platform that governs my use of Terraform, incorporates it into more things, provides an API, gives me management and control and maintenance and uh, auditability, right, and governance. All those are those are the things that people are going to pay for, and that's where the competition is and should be. What kind of ecosystem you see will be created around Open Tofu? As I was talking to him, it's all uh, the response came from once again the user. Actually, some big users they were not comfortable. That kind of also led to Open Tofu because it. Do you also see its emergence as a, you know, as a distro? A very good example is Ubuntu. There are so many derivatives based on Ubuntu. I mean, Kubernetes is a great example. Uh, OpenStack is a great example. Uh, what kind of e- e- ecosystem do you see of vendors who will be offering distros? And now they might add, you know, all those differentiators on top of, you know, Open Tofu. Oh my goodness! There, there, there are so many challenges in front of the Open Tofu community. I, I wish them a lot of luck. Um, here in a, in a very sincere way, 
Because the challenge is, is that the providers and the way you plug things into Terraform fundamentally create distributions. And so if you were, if you were, if you were adding something into te- to open tofu and it breaks compatibility with the providers, then you're going to have to have your own providers. You're going to have to compile your own providers. And, and let me, let me, this is, this is a little bit confusing, but I want to, I want people to understand how this is how open communities and distributions work. If you are licensing, if you are, if you are a customer of, um, Open Tofu Manager X. I'll just call. Uh, I don't want to use X anymore for this. Open Tofu Manager uh, Kai, um, and and Kai gives you a distribution of Open Tofu, which they would do, and then attaches you to the provider libraries that Open Tofu is maintaining. All that's great, but when they find a bug in Open Tofu or in any of the providers that you're depending on, you now have a, an expectation, just like you had with HashiCorp, that they will fix that bug and then move that through the distribution channels. But because it's an open community project, you're, you're going to have to upstream that fix or have an alternate distribution model to build your own provider, build your own version of Open Tofu, and then distribute that to the customer. That is, that is the challenge with open source. It's what Red Hat has done with Linux and the other distros too that makes it so valuable. And so the, the thing that you're getting in this case that we're still going to have to work out how this goes is how well can the community take fixes to these providers and then put them back into the system? And it could be, and this is the way the provider model was supposed to work, that the end, like the Amazon provider is maintained, it's not currently maintained exclusively by Amazon, but it, the, you would hope Amazon would then fix the bug. But, um, and there's a huge community benefit if, you know, uh, manager Kai then turns around, fixes a bug, and then everybody gets the benefit. That's the beauty of open source, and it's a huge deal. But it takes time, and if somebody needs that bug fixed quickly, there has to be a process to get it through the system. Um and that's that's and then you know if it's not reviewed or not accepted because there's all sort there's all sorts of wrinkles in how these things work, and so at the end of the day that that customer relationship with between Kai and the customer ends up they need to own that whole stack of technology. It's a huge benefit that they can now own that huge stack of technology. In the past, they were beholden to HashiCorp to do that work, and and. Kudos to Hash- HashiCorp for it being high enough quality that that whole system was working without having a way for communities in really to fix bugs and funnel things up and then take control of their own distribution. So at the end of the day, this should create a better customer experience. And it also is going to create more um, uh, complexity within how those things get managed. Exactly like your mo- you were describing all of these derivatives of the popular distros, right? There's a, there, one of the reasons there's a ton of, of near copies of distros is because it gives the vendor who's using that, that distro the freedom to add, inject, change, fix, control their own destiny. Um, and, and that ultimately in open source is the key power. But, you know, the dis, distros are part of, a successful open source project. The good thing is that since OpenTofu is part of Linux Foundation, and Linux Foundation, you know, is a foundation of foundation. They have Kubernetes, they have Linux kernel, they do have uh, expertise in how to manage, you know, um, Kubernetes is a good example. They are Kubernetes distros, you know, but they are all, it doesn't really matter which Kubernetes you are using. It's not the same story as SUSE versus Red Hat versus Canonical Linux. So uh, do you also think that that experience will also benefit the community and also the community will also overlap because it's the same cloud native kind of community there? I, you know, it's interesting with all of the providers, I, and I, I don't know any of the backroom machinations that landed um, Terraform in the Kuber, in the CNCF specifically. Um, I, I, I think this is more adjacent to CNCF than, than in CNCF. And I, 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 I don't, I haven't heard the arguments for it one way or another. I think it's, a, it's a convenient and smart move, but showing up at, you know, I could see a whole parallel conference to KubeCon for Terraform, <laughs> Terraform alone, um, because all the providers, all the consumers on it, it's, it's its own, uh, provisioning engine in some ways comparable to, 
certainly not comparable to Kubernetes in a lot of ways, but in, in some cases, it is. It's it's a DS it's a DSL, a domain specific language for cloud provisioning, and um, that's not the same thing as what Kubernetes does. Um, so I, I I think that there's you know we're not at the end of this road from a governance perspective on these projects. Um, you know the good news is I think most customers. At, at the end of the day, can shrug their shoulders and say, we'll use Terraform as long as we can. We'll, you know, the the, the um, alternate managers will, you know, have a have a mechanism to, at least in the short term, not not have their businesses disrupted, which was their, their goal with this. Um, and at the end of the day, I think, you know, for those, those businesses to unlock value, then they're going to have to find ways to differentiate and and add into open tofu in ways that that work within the community framework. And there'll be good players and there'll be bad players, <laughs> like there always are in communities. And and I also think that uh, HashiCorp is not in anywhere done or seeding the ground. They actually know these the product and space really really well. And I expect to see innovation coming out of Terraform that. Um, will likely, you know, uh, impress, you know, based on their track record, will impress people in, in how it works and what it can do. Um, so, you know, there's, and, and that will give businesses an opportunity to evaluate, do they want to go and, you know, license the, the HashiCorp versions and take advantage of, of what they're, what they're adding into the product. Um, and, this shouldn't be a shock to anybody we're, we're having an open source conversation, but at the end of the day, uh, customers will pay money for products, right? The, the, the opportunity, if you're building something internally that mirrors some of these products, I, which I see a lot of customers doing open tofu might make you more, um, feel safer building your own stuff on top of this. We're actually in a place where there's going to be a lot of managers and, uh, if you're a technical leader and your teams are, are building their own managers, at, at this point, I would start questioning that decision. There's there's just too many in, on market. Let's look at it purely from customers, users, businesses perspective. Just take the technology out of it. If you look at, you know, once again, if you talk about Terraform or you talk about Open Tofu, uh, what is the main business problem they're going to solve and does that really matter whether it's open tofu or it's Terraform? I, I think that cuts to the heart of the matter here. At, at the end of the day, businesses are looking for an abstracted way to handle this cloud and infrastructure interaction. So, so it, And they want to do that with as little drama as possible. They need a reliable way to say, I need to build this cluster or configure this system. That That's what these products do. And they do it as part of a series of operations in a CI/CD pipeline or an infrastructure pipeline as part of right other tools. And so at, at the end of the day, what customers need is a reliable, flow drama, predictable way to manage their infrastructure, right? And, and really, it matters to us because we're, we're, we're down in the industry in the weeds, but from a customer's perspective, they don't. They want to spend less time worrying about tofu or Terraform, and more time run, setting up, tearing down, and using infrastructure. Um, and the extent to which companies are helping people do that—that that is actually the value proposition here. And you know, the the only thing we're trying to do is reduce the friction of a potential license confusion. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if it's open or not open. If you're solving the customer's problem without adding friction. Um, and that is that is at the end of the day, the, the, the way to understand this problem um, and not, not become so embroiled in the, you know, this license, that license, this company, that company, or, or, or you know, is your infrastructure, are you running your infrastructure better today than you were yesterday? And do you have a plan to do it better next week? And if, if, that's true. A lot of what this is it really doesn't matter. Rob, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about Open Tofu and Terraform. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Swap.